Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. For the first time in human history, Varda Space Industries has manufactured an extremely important and difficult to produce HIV medication in low Earth orbit. And upon trying to re-enter, the FAA put the brakes on the entire project, saying that somehow it's too much of a threat to the public. If the FAA is reacting like this to a small reusable satellite, how are they going to react to space manufacturing? manufacture on a vast scale in the future. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon once again. Welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I'm up here in beautiful Cascade, Colorado. Such a lovely place. Visiting my oldest friend in the world and on my way to LA and then Flagstaff after that. At least that's how the schedule seems to be going for my tour. And then wrapping things up here in Colorado. Once again, if you are familiar with a location here in Colorado that could house about 30 people for a lecture and you can get it for me for about $300. Well, please let me know. My email is in the description. And if you want to support the rest of this tour, well, that's all in the description as well. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about what the FAA is doing with space flight. So for those of you familiar with Varda Space Industries, what they're doing is similar to what a company uh, called Space Forge in Wales is doing. That is to say, using reusable satellites to manufacture stuff in orbit, very important and unique stuff that's very difficult to manufacture here on Earth because of the difficulty of creating microgravity. Well, that's impossible actually here on Earth. And also the creation of a vacuum, much easier in space. And the types of things that they can manufacture out there are fantastic and groundbreaking compared to what we can manufacture here, especially in the world of pharmaceuticals. And this particular drug that they were experimenting with in orbit is useful not only for treatment with AIDS, but also some other extremely deadly diseases that threaten the human species. And yet, the FAA has somehow decided that this small little satellite with its couple hundred kilograms worth of payload somehow represents a greater threat than the biggest rocket in human history. So what makes Varda's approach to manufacturing in space so groundbreaking and different? Well, because they intend to use automated reusable satellites to conduct this manufacturing rather than transporting whatever it is they want to manufacture to a space station in orbit. The ISS has a backlog of at least 18 months for any experiments that anybody might want to carry out, and that backlog is also dependent on just how viable the NASA might think the experiment might be. That is to say, there's a good chance that your experiment isn't even going to get an opportunity to be put into low Earth orbit, regardless of how groundbreaking it might be, if NASA doesn't have the space or if they just don't regard it as being vital enough. With Varda, all of this can be done so much less expensively with a reusable spacecraft that is deployed on a photon spacecraft provided by Rocket Lab, but deployed in orbit on a SpaceX rideshare mission. And by the way, none of this is theoretical. This is something that Varda has done already. So what is the benefit of manufacturing pharmaceuticals in orbit? Well, according to Varda's website, I think they put it pretty well, processing in a microgravity environment dramatically alters buoyancy, natural convection, sedimentation, phase separation, and drives significant differences in transportation sport-driven phenomena. What does all of that mean? Well, it means that you can produce not only the same kind of drugs that you can make here on Earth, but a lot easier, you can also create new types of drugs that are simply impossible to create here on Earth. According to Varda, quote, Varda's microgravity platform offers direct access to processing in the microgravity of low Earth orbit. Microgravity offers the ability to eliminate factors such as natural convection and sedimentation. Processing in a microgravity environment provides a path to formulating small molecules and biologics that traditional manufacturing processes cannot address. The resulting particle size distributions, more ordered crystals, and 
novel forms can lead to improved bioavailability, in other words, new types of drugs, extended shelf life, novel intellectual property, and innovative routes of administration. Again, complicated wording there, but essentially a way of saying that eliminating sedimentation, that is to say the effects of gravity where things kind of puddle up at the bottom of a petri dish. And by the way, this is extremely useful for 3D printing of organs and other human tissues, which by the way, Redwire is doing on the ISS right now. This sort of thing could make these types of medical breakthroughs not only possible, but also a lot more affordable because putting one of these satellites into orbit and retrieving it is way less expensive than sending it up on a crew dragon, a cargo dragon, or something else to the ISS. So what did they manufacture in orbit, by the way? Well, a drug called ritonavir, and I think I pronounced that right, at least the computer told me that's how it's pronounced, but it's called a protease inhibitor. Protease is an enzyme that allows for the duplication of certain proteins, but in any event, what it does, if a protease inhibitor prevents the replication of certain types of cells and viruses, which means it can be used to treat HIV because it inhibits the replication application of this particular virus. It is seldom employed for its own antiviral activity, but instead proves as a booster for other types of protease inhibitors. Although ritonavir was initially designed to inhibit HIV protease, studies have found that it also inhibits other types of protease processes. For example, because of its mechanism of action, ritonavir is under investigation for its use in treating some forms of cancer. In addition, it is used in combination with other medicines to treat hepatitis C infections. So not only has the Varda experiment produced some of this incredibly useful drug, but it also has produced promising processes in orbit to create better versions of this drug. So an amazing thing that apparently the FAA is holding up for reasons that I can't begin to comprehend. So what about the satellite itself? How how do they intend to accomplish this? Well, it's called the W Series Satellite, that is Varda's flagship vehicle, and it stands alone, so they say, as the only all-in-one commercial satellite and re-entry vehicle built specifically for the return of materials from orbit. Other operational re-entry vehicles are built with humans in mind, meaning significant costs are added through the need for life support systems and other amenities needed to sustain astronauts. Once again, I'm not 100% sure that this is true because Space Forge in Wales is building a satellite almost precisely like this with the same kinds of objectives. We'll find out a little bit more about what Space Forge is doing here in a moment. So Varda's W series satellites are self-sustaining space satellites not relying on the likes of the ISS for any of its operations. It has the complete freedom to operate to precise needs and timings of Varda's customers, again, at least in theory. The W series has been built for ease of manufacturing and frequent launches and landing, the first mass-produced re-entry vehicle and orbital production facility in human history. Again, bold claim, I'm pretty Pretty sure the folks in Wales would have something to say about that, but still, Varda has a satellite up in orbit right now that has successfully produced pharmaceuticals, and Space Forge is not. Another very significant detail is the fact that the W series is designed for terrestrial landings and not landing on water, which makes it simpler and cheaper to recover. This may, however, be part of the problem as well, because Varda was planning on landing in a secure military facility, and now that permission has been denied as well. And by the way, this process has been going on for quite some time. Varda spacecraft launched on June 12th as part of a rideshare mission on a SpaceX Falcon 9, as I said before, and completed several weeks of checkouts before starting a 27-hour drug manufacturing experiment. When the ground controllers gave the go-ahead, the mini-lab began growing crystals of ritanavir, and the experiment was completed on June 30th. Data was downlinked from the spacecraft, showing that everything went well. Varda was, of course, 
thrilled about all of this. Quote, for the first time ever, orbital drug processing has happened outside of a government-run space station, they tweeted. This is our first step in commercializing microgravity and building an industrial park in low Earth orbit. Well, not so fast, because the FAA is not comfortable with how Varda is going to bring this spacecraft back to Earth, and Varda's satellite has been sitting up in low Earth orbit waiting for this problem to be resolved ever since late June. It's absolutely ridiculous, and when it comes right down to it, the FAA is not being all that specific as to why this is such a problem. And by the way, the Air Force has also denied Varda Space Industries access to their Utah recovery range, where, by the way, this particular re-entry experiment was carried out in the first place under U.S. Air Force and FAA oversight. So here's the quote that they gave to the media yesterday, quote, The request to use the Utah test and training range for the landing location was not granted at this time due to the overall safety, risk, and impact analysis. In a separate process, the FAA has not granted a re-entry license. All organizations continue working to explore recovery options. What the hell? I recently watched an interview with a Varda engineer and I started coming to the conclusion that this may be more about politics than it is about safety because Varda had a very difficult time raising the necessary money from the government and securing the support of certain politicians for their experiment and the reason for that is this process endangers the well-being of existing pharmaceutical companies and the existing status quo and there are many, many politicians who have huge invested interests in how things go right now with pharmaceutical production. And if there is a new process that comes out that may bypass these processes or simply come out with a much better way of manufacturing these drugs, both better drugs, more efficiently produced drugs, more innovative drugs, if this can be done by a different company than the ones that they are currently using, that means lots of people are going to be losing lots of money and lots of politicians are going to be losing colossal donations to their campaign funds. Now, of course, this is pure speculation on my part. However, when I compare the potential danger represented by this tiny satellite to commercial air traffic, to people on the ground if something goes wrong, etc., compared to the potential dangers represented by by a 30-story tall rocket being launched a few kilometers away from inhabited areas? It doesn't make any sense, and it makes me extremely suspicious. And this is where Space Forge may have an opportunity, because Great Britain, as a result of their cost controls and socialized health care, does not have nearly as profitable of a pharmaceutical industry as the United States does. And in addition to that, there are not as many politicians who are heavily influenced by pharmaceutical companies in Great Britain as there are in the United States. Which means, if Space Forge wants to recover their reusable satellite somewhere in Britain, where the CEAA has authority and not the FAA, that could be a different story entirely. Even though the CAA has been notoriously restrictive on spaceflight up to this point, I have a feeling that they might be a lot less invasive and a lot less interventionist when it comes to a tiny reusable satellite manufactured by a UK company. And by the way, since I toured their facilities in Wales last year, Space Forge has been very busy indeed building new relationships across the planet, most significant of which, in my opinion, is their new relationship with Northrop Grumman, because it is Space Forge's ambition not to manufacture pharmaceuticals, at least not at this point, but rather manufacturing new types of alloys, and as far as this collaboration is concerned, with new semiconductors 
semiconductors in space because the idea is microgravity and ultra high vacuum allows for the production of higher quality materials, including higher quality semiconductors in space utilizing reusable automated satellites, satellites that may re-enter and be brought down in the UK instead of the US, which Again, we have yet to see what's going to happen here, but it's very possible that the UK may jump on this opportunity to take a lead in this particular industry. The ambition is for Space Forge to become part of Northrop's semiconductor supply chain, manufacturing better quality semiconductors than the existing two foundries that Northrop Grumman has at their disposal right now. Of course, Rip Northrop's role is going to be mostly in validating these new materials when they return to Earth, but nevertheless, the prospects are very exciting indeed. Quote, in space manufacturing is an area we think is going to grow massively in the next few decades, so we're very keen to work with them. Given how many electronic systems we build across the company, there's loads and loads of applications where this is possibly a game changer. And by the way, this is per David Pyle, Regional Director for Northrop Space Business sector in the United Kingdom, Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. And incidentally, what you're going to be watching here should look very familiar to you if you've been paying attention throughout this video because Space Forge is advertising the world's first returnable and relaunchable satellite platform called ForgeStar, which is exactly what Varda is claiming to do as well. Although, of course, Space Forge is going to be manufacturing new types of alloys and materials, not pharmaceuticals, at least not for now, so perhaps they can claim some sort of differentiating factor here. And by the way, as you're seeing, they also intend to deploy these satellites both on horizontal and vertical launch platforms, although that may change after they lost their first payload on the ill-fated Spaceport Cornwall Virgin Orbit launch. By the way, that broke my heart because Space Forge had a very interesting payload on that particular flight. As you can see here, Forge Star operates for up to six months in low Earth orbit, again manufacturing these unique materials, and then re-enters very much in the same way that the Varda system does, utilizing a unique patented heat shield, which they wouldn't show me when I toured their facility about a year ago, but they have since revealed what it looks like. Now, even though Space Forge told me that they would be doing land-based recovery as well as ocean recoveries, they may decide for the latter simply because it's a safer process that endangers fewer people on the ground, something the FAA might actually like and something that may give Space Forge a bit of an advantage. But here's the deal. The competition is on. The race is on between these two very promising companies, and even though Varda seems to have taken an early lead, the FAA seems to be interfering with that. I'll keep you updated on this. Please like, please subscribe, also please consider supporting my channel. Check the description for various ways on how to do that, and as always, stay angry about space.